Good day and welcome to SEO Bricks Insight where we look at what's really going on in the world of the bricks. Now, most people are aware that Russia's agricultural powerhouse and a global leader in wheat exports around the world. Now, it's currently increasing its exports of processed wheat products now. Now, the growth in Russian flour supplies has continued its double-digit increase over the last four years and now pasta products are also experiencing a surge in popularity. Now, one of the reasons for this is the high profitability of these exports, which is several times higher than that exports of just raw wheat. I mean, Russia's the leader in wheat exports, but it's began to develop its pro processed grain products. I mean, Russia's been increasing its flour exports for several years now, and it's expanded this product range to include more deeply processed items such as pasta. And I mean, the seven, first seven months of 2024, pasta exports from Russia increased by 20% to 85,000 tonnes. Now, that's according to a report from the Federal Centre on Agroexport by the Russian Ministry of uh, Agriculture. Now, exports also increased last year with an 8% increase to 118,000 tonnes over the course of the year. Now, it's anticipated that this year's results will be much higher than around the 150,000 tonnes mark. Plus, the upward trajectory in past uh, exports from Russia is projected to continue for at least the next six years. But according to the Ministry of Agriculture, it anticipates that Russia past the exports will be 300,000 tonnes by 2030. Now, before I continue, I'd like to make an appeal. If you like and enjoy my videos, you can help me fund the channel and my website, seobricksinsight.com. And to further develop it, you can do this by making a donation, and that can be done by clicking on the thanks button at the bottom of the video screen. Everybody who donates does get a personal thank you from me, and I'm thanking you all now just for watching the video. Now, as you know, Russia is now a leading exporter of wheat flour. And it's reported that um, the Ministry of Agriculture, that's gone for the next four years. Now, in the first seven months of 2024, Russia supplied in excess of 740,000 tonnes of wheat and wheat flour abroad. Now, that's up 40% on the previous year. Now, Russian flour is in demand in many countries around the world, for example, from Afghanistan, China, Iraq, Egypt and Iran. By 2030, Russia may increase its flour exports to 1.7 million tonnes. Now, the supply base can be expanded by developing new markets in the neighbouring countries of Central Asia, Southeast Asia, the Persian Gulf and Africa. I mean, this increase in the export of flour and processed flour-based products is that the profitability of these export processed products is far higher than that of just the raw materials used in processing. Now, if you combine the cheap energy costs of Russia involved in the processing, plus the high quality of the basic ingredients, then you're looking at Russia being able to high, produce high quality pasta at lower prices than competitors, particularly the likes of the Italians. I mean, the sales price of pasta is several times that of the wheat that's used in its production. So Russia's ratio is about 2.5 times, while that of the other leading exporters is 4.4 times. Now, this price gap is further confirmation of the growth potential of Russian exports, says Denis Tartovsky, who's the leading researcher at the Center for Agro-Food Policy of the Presidential Academy. Now, on a global scale, Russia's position remains modest. Currently, Russia's 12th in the place with 1.5% of the world's market in pasta sales, but it really can produce uh, much, much more. I mean, if you look at the total, 7.8 million tons of pasta were supplied around the world, with the leading suppliers being obviously Italy, Turkey and China. It should be noted, however, that the volumes of wheat and pasta exports are not directly compatible with Russia. I mean, the export of pasta is effectively invisible when it's compared with the wheat, uh, raw wheat exports in Russia, and among other grain exports. In value terms, it's 0.3% and 1.2%, and in physical terms, 1% and 3%. To put things into perspective, Russia exports around 60 million tonnes of wheat and grains to world market, so even 300,000 tonnes of pasta is a relatively small amount. With flour at 1.7 million tonnes, it's much the same. 
However, these figures do demonstrate that Russia is behind other countries with grain resources <coughs> in terms of both the physical volume of the supplies and the price of the exported products. So therefore, it's to be expected that there'll be a significant increase in the export of pasta from Russia. I mean, just imagine what Russia could gain if it leveraged its reputation as a reliable wheat supplier in one of flour and pastas. And even if it increases its sales to 5% of the uh, wheat sales, you're looking at 5 million tonnes of flour and 800,000 tonnes of pasta. And that amount of pasta is about 10% of the global market. It would certainly challenge Italy. By the way, Italy is also a major importer of duro wheat from Russia for making high quality pasta. In 2023, Italy imported 450,000 tonnes of duro wheat. So imagine if Russia was able to challenge the Italians, their own product, national product, using their own wheat. Furthermore, the growth of pasta supplies can be facilitated by export duties on grain. Given that the raw materials are more cost effective for Russian processors than competitors on the global market. However, it is considerably more challenging to increase the export of both flour and pasta than actual grain exports. Now that said, the substantial profits to make from the selling of flour and pasta products to friendly countries is a great business opportunity, particularly to friendly countries in the BRICS or the SCO like China, India, Pakistan. Saudi Arabia, Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, Tajikistan, etc. Well, this is partly due to the high competitive nature of the new markets, which makes it difficult for new players to gain a foothold. Furthermore, wheat is a cost-effective commodity to ship and transport than pasta, which needs packaging, and etc. So it's crucial for the country's economy that the increase of finished products is sold, not just raw materials. I mean, an increase in the exports of pasta contribute to the growth in the non-raw material, non-energy commodities um, exports. And that's beneficial for the companies that increase business sustainability, great new sales market, as well as for the state, which raises a growth in industrial production, a decrease in unemployment, and an increase in the share of the taxes in the budget, according to Anastasia Prikhodova, who's Professor of International Business at the University of Economics. However, the growth of pasta exports for Russia is beneficial not only for business in the state, but for the Russian grain market itself. I mean, a rise in the domestic demand for wheat within Russia will provide greater grain exporters with a greater flexibility in terms of their export opportunities. I mean, they'll be able to redirect commodity flows from going to foreign markets to domestic ones when world prices for wheat fall or the Russian government restricts exports. I mean, at the moment, the principal purchasers of Russian pasta uh, are Kazakhstan, Belarus and Turkmenistan. Now, these countries account for slightly more than half of all the exports in physical terms. Now, what other markets can Russia sell its pasta? I mean, geographic factors obviously play an important role in the supply of pasta to the global market. Except with India, uh, Italy, which obviously has a long history of pasta production and export and very strong brand presences. In fact, most of the brands of pasta in Russia, and there are many, have Italian looking and sounding names. But if you do a quick check on the label, you'll discover that it was made in Russia from Russian wheat. So the cost of pasta is significantly higher than that of wheat or flour. And the volume of the supply is obviously influenced by the distance between the exporter and the importer, as well as the proximity of common land borders. So it's going to be an increase in supplies from Russian regions beyond the Urals to the Asian countries, as well as the Central Asian ones, as well as the European part of the country to the Middle East and North Africa, according to Ternovsky. Now, one of the Russia's leading pasta producers is a company called Mafa. Now, they've been working with major food distributors recently in Saudi Arabia and Iran with the support of the Russian Export Center. And it hopes to widen the country exports in the next year or two to other states in the Middle East and North Africa. Now, the company's principal production facility is in Chelyabinsk, which has become renowned as the pasta capital of Russia. Now, the company's objective for 2024 is to increase its exports by up to four times. Prikova notes that the potential sales market will also differ depending on the types of pasta. 
I mean, for example, suppliers of pasta produced from durum wheat find, will find themselves in competition with Italian producers in the markets of Saudi Arabia, uh, the United Arab Emirates, Brazil and other countries in uh, Europe. Concurrently, suppliers of instant noodles may pre prefer to pursue expansion into the Asian and African markets, according to Pradikova. However, the fact that Russian wheat is GMO-free, is of high quality and competitively priced, is going to be in demand by the growing and hungry markets of the Asia, Middle East and African countries, as also with members of the BRICS and the Shanghai Cooperation Organization. Plus, if Russia leverages its reputation as a quality supplier of wheat and grains into the supply of flour and pasta, it could certainly expand its sales markets and uh, its share of them around the world given the high levels of trust it has gained. So that's the situation with Russia's pasta and it will certainly be able to challenge Italy in the, the future. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. And if you enjoyed this video, you can help me further fund the channel and the website by clicking on the thanks button at the bottom of the screen and making a donation. Please like and subscribe and don't forget to use uh, the comments section. I love to see your comments. I love to respond to them. Thank you and I'll see you all again soon.